Welcome back everyone, I am The Depressed Dior and this is Langston Mobile Apex Season 15. Alright, uh, this is on the earliest time slot on Sunday. I've been a bit nervous because I, you know, recently changed this box and I didn't really want to fight any meta boxes. And uh, this one is more or less not... I mean, it has plenty of meta units, but I don't think it's really a meta box. Um, not much to say as far as updates to the box itself. Oh, actually, there's one. Um, I did swap out Florentia with Rosen Seal. Um, as much as I would like the act again to the potential to gain more stratagems off of strategic uh, uh, faction buff, which I don't really get that often. Um, Rosen Seal's crystal barrier thing is just way too important. Um, so I went ahead and swapped her in. Um, we still have two Act Again characters if we need them, and we don't really need them as badly as we used to. Uh, besides that, I've been, I've been working on the um, equipment, the inscription uh, enchants as much as I can. Um, I don't... Tiaras, that's her name. Um, I have everything except for accessories maxed out at this point. Uh, besides that, uh, as for our opponent here, really the only thing that stands out is the geezer off, which is apparently Demon. Um, everything else here is nothing I haven't really seen before. We haven't seen SP Matthew too often. Um, he's honestly not too bad by himself. Um, I'm not as worried about Grinchil anymore since I have Narm and she and Illustrial. Uh, the Aboro does frighten me a bit. And then, of course, we got Awakeners and then it's kind of the standard kit. Um, so they went and banned my, um, Rosen Seal first. And I was kind of concerned about teleport shenanigans or swapping. Um, so I definitely needed to go ahead and get rid of Awakener, but that was... I definitely spent a lot of time on the first ban here because a Burrow is going to be a problem. Um, the only thing I was going to hope for is possibly killing a Burrow with Illustrial because this map is Illustrial's map. This is... yeah, this map here, it's Illustrial's. It belongs to her. So, get rid of the Awakened. Grabbed uh, Christiane here. My opponent went and got rid of Grinshield and Sylvaria. Uh, so I and picked Rosen Seal as a first pick. Um, my opponent had two healers. Yeah, two healers um, and three tanks. So I definitely could have gone for maybe a, a possible negate your tank type build, but honestly, I'm more concerned about the Aboro. I'm more concerned about the DPS than the tanks at this point. Uh, the only tank I, I guess I would be anywhere concerned about is um, Hilda because of her crit negation. So at this point I was like, alright, cool, get rid of Boro, get rid of Sword and Light Shadow, because since I don't have um, any way of negating the the resurrection negation, um, and I know that she, freaking Sword and Light and Shadow can one-shot Christiane, I had to get rid of her. And I went ahead and just immediately went straight for Illustrial. I don't have any way of buffing her right now, because she is not Princess Faction, but like I said, this is her map. Um, they got rid of my TRS, got rid of my um, Kyura, and went, ahead and went straight into Jintoki here. So at this point, I was like, alright, get rid of your remaining Assassin, get rid of Hilda. Um, everything else here is actually not too bad. The Grinch Shield's kind of dangerous, but I have Illustrial, and she's a flyer. Um, SP Matthew by himself is not too bad. He does do physical AoE. Um, everything else here is magic, and Christian is definitely very capable of dealing with magic. So I go ahead and grab Liana because I needed to grab a healer at this point. Uh, they go ahead and get rid of my um, Otter and Calamo, get rid of my Sherry. They go ahead and grab Lightbringer as their tank because I did get ban the, one of their three. Um, so at this point, I have two primary assassins, and then Narm can technically guard bypass if she shoots a flyer, but there's really only Grin Shield here. So at this point, I was like, alright, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of your self resing characters, any extra AoE, um, get rid of, yeah, pretty much get rid of your AoE at this point. Um, and I actually grabbed Narm. Uh, Narm's pretty decent as far as damage is concerned, um, and I'm not too worried about being counterattack killed by Lightbringer. Um, this is mainly just as a deterrent to keep uh, my opponent from grabbing Grin Shield. Because if they grab Grinchil, I can just shoot her down with Narm. Also, Narm has the ability to cast Sprint, which provides both attack and mobility, which will be even greater on Illustrial on this map. So I wasn't exactly sure how effect how reliably I was going to be able to buff Illustrial, so I went ahead and just grabbed Narm. 
Um, I, I think in hindsight, I think I could have gotten away with grabbing an assassin, but I, I went ahead and went with this. The other thing that's great about Narm is she always has a hit and run available. Um, she doesn't have the cooldown for roundabout like usual. So they get rid of my assassins, leaving me with a tank and a healer. And they grab Auden Kill now. So at this point, I was like, all right, I'm just going to get rid of your DPS. Because this is, this is quite possibly going to be a tank push into the middle. So um, my opponent can either grab a second tank or a second healer. Um, Christian probably isn't that useful in this map, or not in this battle, simply because all my attacks going to be physical. I go ahead and grab um, Sissy White. Sissy White can, of course, throw out that fancy buff that bypasses immunity. Um, so I can get extra damage here. So the big thing here is the Gentoki, as always. Um, Phalanxes are spears, and Gentoki is usually always infantry, and sometimes even has infantry troops. So I had to grab something that was reasonably tanky, that could still, that isn't infantry. Um, so in this case, I went with angels. I thought about going with the holy cavalry or whatever they're called, the ones that get the plus 45. Uh, percent magic defense but angels actually have higher defense um, when it's not involving demons so and if I can get rid of Jintoki angels will pretty much ensure I can tank anything out on Kelma throws my way as well as a as as well as Lightbringer. In any case uh, Sissy White here I brought her 3c heal and bounty so like I said I can throw out bounties they bypass immunity and increase damage dealt by 10%. Uh, Narm here, Elephant Cavalry Archers, went with uh, Sun Piercing Era, which is their 3C, which allows her to move again. Um, and then she's got Sprint and Aim. Sprint is just there, just in case. Uh, Liana here, um, 3C with Heal and Act Again with Shrine Maidens. Uh, Illustrial here, uh, 3C, Emerald Crusher, and Roundabout. Really, it's just about the Jade Storm. Um, she actually doesn't have a lot of high multiplier um, attacks, unfortunately. Also went with Elven Cavalry Archer, and like I mentioned before, this is her map. You can already see how far she can move on, uh, just going this far. Um, Christian here went with Angels, and then her standard kits that pretty much just faction buff and negates magic damage. Uh, the Aldon Kelmo here is uh, Mage Class, uh, 3C, Black Hole, Fireball with Fairy Spirit Prophets. Lightbringer here brought faction buff, strengthen, probably for Aldon Kelmo. Um, and then Holy Shield Bash, uh, Jintoki, standard kit Jintoki with Sansi Mercenaries. We got Liana here with the same kit as uh, my Liana. Mine has slightly better stats. Um, Risen Seal here, full heals uh, with Shrine Raidens. Um, Lightbringer can buff everyone except for Jintoki and Auden Kill now. Alright. So yeah, the big thing here, of course, is the... Um, is getting to position with um, Illustrial. I went ahead and opened immediately, putting Bounty on Jintoki. And I started pushing some Lancers forward, because I, I do want to take the center here. So my opponent did fall back immediately. Um, where he was here right that initially, I can't actually reach him. Not without an Uller's Bow. Um, with the sprint, I could reach him, but I wouldn't be able to guard bypass. So the thing about Illustrial uh, that I mentioned, I believe, last video is um, she will b guard bypass, but only on forest, mountains, and grasslands. And there's actually a lot of path in the middle here, so it's actually kind of difficult. Um, I do have the Extreme Magic Bow, but it's not something I really want to rely against uh, when attacking Jintoki and Melee. Uh, also, Illustrial is very prone to killing herself when attacking in melee because of how the animations work for cavalry. So she tends to charge in front of her troops and takes all the damage. Alright. So pushing forward pretty quickly. I, I was very aggressive here, um, which was a little risky because of the portals that Adon Kelmo can do. But my goal here was literally just to get to get to Jintoki. I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to kill Jintoki, but Jintoki currently doesn't actually have any stacks yet. And until he gets those stacks, he doesn't actually have, like, with all of his stacks, he could have 32% uh, damage reduction. But she, he does have reasonably high defense. But uh, beyond that, if I can just get to him. Um, so at this point, I was like, alright, I'm going to go ahead and be aggressive. I'm going to push Illustria forward. And with this, I can reach Jintoki. And Jintoki's already acted, and so has the tank. So unless 
Liana does an act again of some sort right now, um, I can actually deal with this. So my opponent does push forward and starts putting on portals, being pretty aggressive about it. So yeah, at this point, um, I knew Liana was going to probably eventually do something, um, so I, I couldn't really wait. As much as I would like to just do sprint and wait till the next round, I didn't. I didn't. I couldn't afford to take the risk. I wasn't sure what my opponent was going to do here. If there's a good chance that my opponent could do like Jintoki act again and get him back into guard range. I mean, even then, I think I would still be able to get kill simply because of all the guard bypassing. So maybe it wasn't that big of a deal. The other thing I was concerned about was just them positioning themselves in a way that it'll block a celestial, and that would be a problem. Because if I kill anyone else right now, Jintoki will immediately go to four stacks, and that'll be a problem. Also, something to note, until Jintoki actually gets full stacks, his mobility is actually not that great. So at this point, I went ahead and did act again. I do have the exclusive on Liana, so this does give an attack buff. And here comes the Crystal Ward. This Crystal Ward was kind of unnecessary, but it does put up a bunch of stacks up, which I think is probably the reason. Alright, so anyone that's not familiar with the Jade Storm, it converts buffs into debuffs, um, and then increases the damage dealt because of it. I don't know... I don't know how far that actually goes. Um, I can definitely dispel the Ido skill damage and crystal healing here. Um, but I don't know if it has to also successfully become a debuff to get the plus damage or not. But it really was my only option at this point, so... I did take some damage because of his weird aura thing. Or his Ido, or whatever it's called. Oh my god, that damage. I was concerned like whether or not I was going to be able to do enough damage. He did have like 800 defense, but that was ridiculous. Um, yeah, he has about 28,000 HP. Um, I do get a, I do get bonus to damage and crit chance um, all the way up to 20%. I definitely moved enough squares for that. So I definitely had probably guaranteed crit at this point. And I did crit, of course. But man, that damage. That was no joke. I want... Even even the damage I took from the Ido. 56,000. Holy cow. Now I couldn't actually... My roundabout, I actually had no movement left, so I couldn't actually move. And so the act again comes in. So at this point, I'm just pushing forward. Yeah, I think I had a little bit of magic damage reduction from the... Um, troops, but Illustra had no no bu no defensive buffs, so it was just guaranteed good to kill her. And, and last rights I don't think would have helped. So yeah, uh, as mentioned before, I'm just pushing into the middle here as quickly as I can. Um, I'm not too concerned about losing the elite mercenary here, it's just he's actually just there as bait. Um, the biggest issue is trying to get Sissy White in range. Um, but I can also use her as bait, potentially, and just have Auto Kelma Teleport and trade at that point, but I don't think my opponent's willing to do that. So I get hit with Black Hole. Doesn't do too much. Uh, she didn't actually have a buff up at that time. And then I go ahead and just push right here. So yeah, I, I have more or less control of the center. I start throwing out bounties. I put it on the tank because I know that's going to be where I'm going to be hitting most. So, Oda Creation here. Uh, the portals are annoying because they're just going to constantly stack debuffs on me. The good news is Liana's um, uh, 3C will make it so I pervert those debuffs into buffs, which is a little helpful. Alright. So just to put it in perspective, uh, the middle here, the middle six, is right here in the center between the two towers, um, or the four towers rather. Um, with the mobility buff, uh, Lightbringer can reach the middle, but to do so would be to give uh, give up guard position, which I'm completely okay with. Um, Autumn Kelma did use Black Hole. I don't know if Autumn Kelma has Clock or not, but she does have access to eventual Explosion. And then of course fireball, but fireball's not going to do anything because until that fireball pierces the angels, 
it's it's not gonna matter uh and right now everything's kind of on cooldown so i'm kind of okay with that um so i went ahead and used this opportunity to go ahead and push my um my mercenary here to the block so now that thing is just a body taking up a slot which is good so getting hit with dimensional explosion uh, it, it by itself is not enough to kill Tim, the, the Spearman here. Actually, I think I call him Jim. I don't remember who I call him. So I go ahead and do Odo Creation. I specifically waited for Liana to go last because I knew that 3C was coming. So I wanted to throw my 3C to help counteract the, the debuff and damage as best as I could. Holy Shield Bash. This does have a slight buff because of Jintoki dying, but as you can see, it's magic damage. It just doesn't do anything. Um, I really wanted to push forward to keep you know blocking, but I did not want to expose Sissy White. I, I wasn't confident that she would be able to survive a hit from uh, Auden Kelmo. Um, Shrine Maidens only reduce physical damage, not magic. Um, they do have... Shrine Maid the Holy Class troops do have a damage reduction... Um, benefit if they're at 100%, but I didn't want to risk it, so played it safe here. As long as I block majority of them, I'm kind of okay with this. Also, something that's kind of neat here is how the turn order goes. Is I went ahead and attacked here. Um, I wasn't expecting to get a kill. She would get self-res anyway, but I was hoping to do enough damage to prevent the Shrine Maidens from getting to full health. And also, Rosen Seal's uh, Stationary action is the last action for the round, so I'm able to just poke here and then walk back into guard range. And now it's my turn again, and like I mentioned before, Narm's 3C uh, move again always triggers, it doesn't have a cooldown. Um, so at this point I just need to do like 18,000 damage, and I do have Sun's Piercing Arrow if I need it. Yeah, I went ahead and played it safe to Sun's Piercing Arrow here. Yeah, 22,000. I think it would have done more, but most of them died before the arrows reached them. So, now I don't have to worry about Crystal Barriers anymore, but they do have a full stack, so I don't expect to make much progress. And portals are everywhere. So yeah, get hit with fireball, but it just it can't do anything against angels at full HP. It just it there's just so much magic damage reduction, it's just not gonna get anywhere. So the portal that she just put up is here, and I think here. If I think a more clever thing that I mean it was risky, but one thing she uh, my opponent could have done is maybe put the portal here instead, or and then you know, put it somewhere that Lightbringer can reach, that way Lightbringer can actually get in the center. But teleporting is kinda random when it's when it's occupied on a when someone's occupied on the tile. But my opponent is gonna try to use the portals here to get over here. Um, at this point I go ahead and do desperate measures. Get the act again and plus thirty to all stats. I wasn't going to be able to get killed, unfortunately, because Shrine Maidens, but I wanted to do some extra some damage. Because the other thing that I have to be careful about is um, if I, I only have Narm for DPS, really. And I need to make sure um, that I, when it does get down to the final six, I have a position where I can actually get either get killed or out damage him. Alright, so at this point I occupy four of the six uh, tiles, my opponent occupies only one, and the remaining one's all the way down here that he can't really reach. The thing that is slowing me down here is just all the debuffs I'm just constantly being stacked with. So I'm doing whatever I can at this point. Yeah, my opponent's AoEs are on cooldown, but I think they're about to wear off. Or about to... refresh. Also, the 3C did put a debuff that we can't dispel, which makes it so we take, like, many more debuffs from the portals. It's just really annoying. 
Um, I did throw out, of course, uh, full bloom here, um, just so I can get some extra damage in. As you can see, my opponent's actually catching up because of all the AoE damage. Uh, getting rid of the mercenary would actually be probably a little wise, but there's not really an opportunity for me to do it. So at this point, I'm just trying to do damage. My opponent, of course, procs their freaking armor, like always. So I am doing more damage, but it's not really giving me much leeway. Yeah, so as you can see here, I'm just throwing out damage as much best as I can. Uh, this time, I don't think his armor procced. So, a bit more damage. Now the Oda creation is actually a little annoying, because um, the other thing I was also doing, um, besides just damage, as you can see, he's down to Lightbringer is actually down to one stack of Crystal Barriers. Every time I was hitting, um, hitting him with Narm, Narm was applying two D buffs, but unfortunately, it was not enough. And now that that three C is active, I actually can't remove any of the remaining um, Crystal Barriers. But I'm still gonna go ahead and just do damage anyway. So, Sun's Piercing Arrow. Unfortunately, the armor proc here. So, I did less damage. Black Hole. Got silenced on uh, Liana, unfortunately, which is a little annoying. Liana could still passively heal and passively cleanse buffs, though. So, or cleanse debuffs, at least. Alright, I did get full bloom onto Sissy White, just to get a little extra damage. Alright, got rid of the silence, which is nice. Yeah, they actually not really much damage, really. And the main thing here is I'm trying to get rid of the uh, negate debuffs on uh, Narm so I can get buffs back on her. Alright, and now Dimensional Explosion again. At this point I kind of start losing the damage raise. And the big thing I actually failed to notice here was um, I got mobility downed on uh, Christiane here, which means her guard is actually down. And uh, I walked right into this, so I got hit with Holy Shield Bash here, which nearly killed me. Uh, if this had killed, I probably would have lost this fight just purely because of damage. So I go ahead and heal her back to full. Uh, I did something stupid here. I I I was like, hey, I can just you know, you know, war cry some buffs off of Lightbringer, but that doesn't work because Lightbringer has mirror lights on her. So this was a waste. There was no reason for me to do this. In fact, this just gave my opponent more damage. And my opponent's already 40,000 damage ahead of me. And now I just gave him another 17,000. So, a bit unfortunate there. Alright, my opponent just is. The act again there was just the cycle cooldowns, it looks like. Alright, I did get rid of the. Um, Oh, actually, I know what that was for. Uh, that was to potentially attack again while guard was down, but the the mobility down only lasts for one turn, so when Christiane took her action, she was fine. So, teleport to here. Get hit with another one of these. I think this was a clock proc. Alright, so I go ahead and just punch her, just to get some extra damage in. At this point, my opponent's so far ahead in damage, it doesn't really matter that much. And then, yeah, you can see what the goal here was. The The goal here was to try to have Lightbringer live long enough to win the damage race. So I go ahead and do aim here, just to cycle some debuffs. There's, he gets rid of some of them. Of course, I didn't get more of them because of the portal. But I didn't have to worry about being counterattack kill here, so get kill here. So, I pretty much need to have a way of killing Lightbringer twice and uh, 
or get, you know, 50 damage ahead. My opponent go ahead, went ahead and just opted to throw away Liana at this point. Honestly, I think that was probably the not right call. But I don't think she, I don't think my opponent really had an option. So yeah. Um, so yeah, immunity to debuffs is gone. I'm going to eventually start debuffing her. Uh, Narm has the ability to increase the damage um, and reduce mobility. So eventually I'll start doing decent damage little by little. The question is whether or not I can do it within four rounds. Alright, Devotee's Glow. So I haven't moved here. This is mainly just to give a position for Narm to shoot. So as you can see, I'm just trying to get rid of as many debuffs as possible. Alright, so this is just a regular attack. Oh, sorry, this is Sun Piercing Arrow here. Um, I did Armor didn't proc at this time, it looks like. So 15,000 damage. And here's the key thing, is I, um, I silenced her. So... I don't think it matters that much, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think it actually matters, but I did silence her. I took out a good chunk of health. And as you can see, I'm closing the distance on the damage. Um, yeah, mobility down. I think the... Oh, yep, here it is. The damage dealt from an evolved arm is increased by 15%. So each time I hit her, hit her I'm just going to do more and more damage. And at this point, um, she's going to heal one more time for 20%. And then all she's got left is the self res. It's going to be close, but my opponent gives up at this point. So, neat little fight. Uh, got the show off Illustrial. I was, I, I wish I was able to you know, keep her for longer, but her kick killing Jintoki was pretty key. Because Jintoki would have just beat the tar out of me. Beat the tar out of Christiane. Um, and then just made everything worse. I mean, I might have been able to pull it off. Um, but I, I don't know if... I mean, with that... The amount of damage we did, I, I might have been able to kill him even with uh, the damage reduction uh, stacks. But it's hard to say. In any case, we actually win. And we won on uh, in Silver 1, so we actually made some progress for once. So that's nice. Um, probably the people, the usual meta boxes are probably already filtering through gold at this point. So hopefully uh, we'll get to fight some more interesting boxes like that. And hopefully we'll get maps that are good for Illustrial, because that was... You know, that map is key. It literally, as long as you have a full scarred uh, illustrial, you can just cover the entire map. It's really fun. Um, in any case, I am Theodore Prestigio. This was Language of Mobile Apex Season 15. I'll see you guys later.